this episode is so fun, although it doesn't sound it. Let's talk the INFJ obvious mean streak and what happens when two INFJs who don't see eye to eye go head to head. It's quite the spectacle. So here we go, the INFJ showdown. Get ready for the gauntlet. So INFJs aren't as rare as it seems, or so it appears. With nearly 8 billion people on record, being there's only like 16 personality types, I guess it kind of makes sense. Those odds, I guess, are easier to grasp. But not a ton of INFJs meet each other or are close with other INFJs. Since it's such a rare type, there's a weird hmm about it. As if such rarity is easy. Jeez, it's not easy. A lot of INFJs are like, I am INFJ, let me sip my tea and let you grovel at my feet. There's varying degrees of this personality type. A very healthy, wise INFJ who's jiggity check themselves before they riggedy wreck themselves has shed some or most ego. A still and learning one, better yet, a pupil still has ego as a thick skin. This causes INFJ battles. You'd think the same personality type would gravitate towards one another, right? Wrong. See, humans don't function like that. With such rarities, other INFJs who aren't as healthy will not like you. See, they wanted that rarity spotlight. And if you have an extra oomph, an extra spotlight and sparkle, the not as healthy functioning INFJ will be a hater. They just won't show it in obvious ways because they want to adhere to their label of INFJ. So here's my example. I live in a house with four people, three generations, ages three to 80. Two are INFJs. Similar adolescent experiences, same upbringing, different adult experience. Both with solid viewpoints and solid stances. One is easier to sway, the other easier to budge. Debates bring out the worst in the unenlightened INFJ. Differing stance can lead to a bickering battle. If others are in the vicinity, it can lead to a gauntlet of assholes, unable to see clearly projecting their inner trash onto the one they see as stronger. There's a psychological reason behind this. See, unless a person has an official title and status, you know, uh, Kanye West, Stephen King, um, Britney Spears, you know, like that, people will root for who they see but don't voice as the underdog. Ego coming to play again. Need I say more? It's a fear of getting lost in the crowd. Shine bright no matter if wrong or right, it gets escalated. People were triggered. Hence the gauntlet of people rooting for the underdog. An INFJ showdown could play out as such. Let's use the topic abortion as our example. Touchy topic, yes. Real one, yeah. If you are offended, I'll see you in the next video. My apologies if the topic offended you. But there's two people, both INFJs with varying degrees of opinion. One, an INFJ T. The other, smoothly transforming into an INFJ A. We're gonna call the INFJ T Marissa, the A Natasha. Bear in mind, there is no mediator and no gauntlet, just the two women. Marissa is firm, abortion is wrong. She's anti-abortion. Natasha is pro-choice and will not alter her beliefs for the comfort of Marissa or popular opinion. Natasha is just as firm in her stance. 
As INFJs, they will be unified in agreeing to definitions as to, for example, define right and define wrong, and they'll both have an all-angle approach. Both organized and articulate, both INFJs have reviewed who, what, when, where, why, how, without too much preparation. The conversation starts as such. Ugh, I can't believe Cheryl got pregnant again when she just had an abortion a few years ago, scoffs Marissa as she's scrolling through Facebook and spots Cheryl's ultrasound picture in the feed. Natasha rolls her eyes. Marissa notices and asks, isn't that gross? Natasha weighing her options, so agree and go against self to keep the peace and be loyal, air quotes, or voice her opinion risking an argument. Natasha speaks up and says, well, Cheryl had a rocky road. The pregnancy was accidental and she probably knew it'd be better for all in the long run, and so on. See, Cheryl posts everything and everybody knows she's had addictions and depression in her past. So they go back and forth. Marissa is set in her mind. A person, accident or not, had a choice to wear protection and they've created a life. Therefore, the woman should take responsibility. Marissa's focus is on the woman's error, not the man who's just at fault. Only without the first-hand experience of childbearing. Natasha understands that had Cheryl not had her abortion, the baby may not have had such a positive destiny. Natasha firmly believes it's Cheryl and the father's choice and theirs alone. She believes only they know their circumstances and surety of outcomes. If guilt is to be harbored anywhere, Natasha believes it's on Cheryl and Cheryl's partner. So the women go tit for tat on all facets and still can't agree. One wants the happy median and to agree to disagree to both walk away all the wiser on how human minds form into such opinions. Guess who this is? Natasha. Marissa on the other palm is pissed. She's all fuck Natasha, that cold hearted bitch. Triggered, Marissa will voice it too. Now, with all the digs, Natasha's moral compass is tested, not necessarily her ego. So for the next hour or two, the INFJ T can turn passive aggressive and use insults as her weapon. Without thinking twice, Marissa brought up unrelated past errors of Natasha's. She strayed off topic and kicked Natasha where it hurt, right in the lady balls. It's all already been placed into the world. There's no taking it back. Shit. Here comes resentment. Damn it. Alrighty, folks. Let's scoochie bonaducci to the INFJ mean streak. Oh my god. I just said scoochie bonaducci. I say that to my three-year-old niece. <laughs> Alright, regarding the last example of abortion. It's just a real life example. No eggshells here, okay? I know it's super touchy, but hate the message, not the messenger. All right, ever searched crazy Karens on YouTube? Okay, totally do it. It's kind of like the people of Walmart videos. It's fucking gold, you guys. But yeah, the triggered INFJ can kind of resemble those monsters. They're like bridezillas. They hold it in, sometimes it boils, and having held it in, so many thoughts. Ugh, it's just like the bottle erupts. Okay, and then they'll go home later on and be like, oh, fuck my life. I really did that, huh? Again, it's already released into the world. There's no rescinding it. The triggered INFJ can have the mean streak of a fucking animal. <laughs> the next, for the next week, you'll be facing passive aggression, 
more often a heavy dose of truths. It's such a mighty punch that the INFJ looks like a prick and a half. There's just so much held in, it spews out like word vomit. So, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Did Titanic piss off the iceberg? And furthermore, was the iceberg an INFJ? Okay, totally hear me out. So an INFJ iceberg could have been so gobbly gooked with emotion and outward expressing it, they forgot about the passengers for a second. It was focused on fuck that ship, fuck that ship, fuck that ship. So when iceberg INFJ came to its senses, the guilt sunk in. And it sunk that INFJ iceberg straight to the bottom of the Atlantic. Lucy, also an INFJ, was like, fuck that iceberg, fuck that iceberg, fuck that iceberg, for not remembering the passengers for that fiery, rageful split second. <laughs> oh, you guys still there? What? Too much? <laughs> so there are key lessons here, people. Number one, don't be an iceberg. Number two, don't let the ego whale swallow you like you did Pinocchio. Step away from the battle when it gets too heated. Just be like, I can have a discussion, but I refuse to partake in an argument. You know, that type of stuff. Recognize what happens to your body when you're set off. With me, my heart races and my hands feel weak on the verge of trembling. My defenses go up. I'll do whatever it takes to protect myself if I must. I'd honestly rather part ways because loud voices and arguing, it gives me great anxiety. Nobody ever takes my suggestion to replace raw with a hug session when I break up fights. It's so weird, they totally should. At the end of the day, remember your energy is special. Don't share it too easily and don't give it away to the unworthy. See, light a candle too often, the wick gets dull and it cracks light it when it's worth it the light can last holy shit that totally rhymed i'm gonna write that down on a second but thank you so much for checking in hug somebody today and don't be a limp dick if you're gonna be a dick be a cool one you know puns soft humor no slashing your sadie girl adores the living shit out of you thanks so much for being here until next time